I just wanted to say thank you to all the organizers. It's, um, you know, I produce some events myself, so it's like by no means easy uh, to convene people digitally. Um, so I just wanted to kind of share that with you. So it's greatly appreciated. Um, I'm Ferris Oweiss. I'm uh, coming at you from Austin, Texas. So hope everyone is, uh, you know, just staying safe, uh, you know, wherever you are and uh, appreciate uh, everyone kind of just joining together today. Um, the, you know, cause obviously we're all facing this, you know, common challenge and, you know, going about it in our own way where we're from. And it just kind of, I was thinking kind of, you know, before this, that, oh, what were we talking about before this virus was, you know, mainstream and on the top of everyone's mind. And, you know, I find it very important to, you know, with the web three community to kind of stick together and make sure that what I at least perceived as a prominent topic, that being digital rights, uh, agency, um, data ownership. Um, from a legislative and um, uh, business growth sense was fairly prominent and taking fold in, in meaningful ways uh, prior to the virus kind of encapsulating our headspace. Um, so I, f I find these convenings very important. And today, in, in terms of like just my, you know, tiny contribution to the whole uh, community, um, I was going to talk about the future of streaming. So like music streaming, uh, which is the space I'm operating in currently a vertical I'm um, you know, involved with and data unions, which is a, a framework, uh, we can get into, um, I'm the guy on the right. Um, although I haven't had a haircut in what seems like forever. So I definitely look a bit different these days. Uh, the guy on the right is Shiv from streamer. Um, and streamer is the one that actually builds data unions, uh, and the, and the underlying technology behind it. Uh, myself and Chelsea, my business partner, we're from Instigation Protocol. Um, and essentially what we do is we collaborate with blockchain solutions and we specifically help them uh, do two things uh, with enterprises specifically, uh, commercialize uh, and tell a vertical specific story uh, within an industry. So we don't go all over the place. We go to a blockchain solution and we're saying, we think that your solution is very applicable in a very specific vertical. Um, and we just focus all our attention there. Um, and we kind of have our own business development process and a kind of a storytelling solution. Cause we found that um, a lot of blockchain solutions, um, were having a tough time landing, doing one of two things, landing pilots, um, you know, and, or contracts or uh, suspending so a lot of their money trying to get work or, um, getting a contract or a pilot, but then losing money on it, uh, which is kind of counterproductive or in the process you know, they were investing, you know, a disproportionate amount in the technology, uh, versus the business side, um, and tactical side of the, um, of the whole ecosystem. So that's where we felt we could best uh, support with, you know, what we cared about, um, we're passionate about and our skill sets. Um, so we found streamer who was already doing stuff, um, in banking and, you know, financial, financial services, uh, mobility, uh, with like Ford and Bosch and all that. And we, and we thought music streaming would be cool for your data union framework. Um, and although I thought Shiv would go before me and have a much more robust explanation of data unions to prep everyone, I'll just give a little like cliff notes version of it. Um, essentially a data union is a framework in which if you're a producer of data, um, the value that your data is worth, um, you are able to then monetize on it in real time, uh, via micropayments. So within a platform, uh, the, the data you produce creates value for a third party, let's say an advertiser, the money that data is worth usually then accumulates all to the benefit of whatever platform you're using. You know, that could be Facebook or we'll talk about music streaming. That could be Spotify in a data union framework. Portion of this proceeds of your data is worth goes back to you, the data producer. Um, so this is in short, uh, you know, what a data union is essentially real time data sharing where the producers of the data monetize on the value they contribute to the platform, um, as an individual, but then as part of a larger community. And we basically said to streamer, we should take what you're doing in financial services and mobility, and we should do it in music streaming. So a good rule of thumb, um, when you're trying to find a industry to operate in or a new place to explore, at least to see if you're, you know, you know, you have a product market fit, um, is where there's very, very stiff competition. So in the music streaming space, they call it a streaming war, um, and where you see, um, a lot of growth cap funneling in. So those usually create a nice um, ecosystem where not everyone, but you'll find companies that are looking for differentiators to find new ways to grow or new ways to be, to differentiate versus their competitors, uh, given how competitive 
and how cash rich it is. So, you know, we found on this journey that, you know, there's hundreds of platforms in the world, but they all tend to have one, some, or all of these problems. Um, the primary problem is that growth is really, really expensive. Um, so the music that actually gets on the streaming platforms, that's the biggest cost center. Um, acquisition also costly, but then retention is increasing because so many more competitors are coming online, uh, which is giving users choice fatigue. So like this is music, but in a video streaming context, you could have Netflix, Hulu, there's Disney plus, there's all these ones. So consumers are getting quite tired and can only afford to buy so many. Uh, so that's why retention is getting, um, you know, so expensive. Uh, but most people are doing it at a loss, uh, which is okay because there's so much growth capital coming into the space. In addition to that, um, you know, there's been uh, some kings of the industry have be de been dethroned. So, for example, uh, Spotify is a market leader, um, but they're not market leaders in, let's say, the Middle East, where there's a regional player called Ngami, which is all they want to do is just defend their space. In emerging markets, for example, you have uh, streaming platforms that their main problem isn't growth, it's not the content, it's not anything, it's piracy, because uh, there's not enough. So, for example, India. Um, you know, you have a billion people, but there's only around 100 million uh, that can actually afford to pay for a subscription. Um, so more than often than not, you have a piracy issue where um, they're not even producing data on the platform. They're just using it as a media player. So based on where you are, where you are in the market, um, all these kind of variables, you'll encounter some of these problems. Um, with that said, everyone tended to have the same playbook. So they're all looking for ways to subsidize user acquisition. Usually, um, this is through partnerships. So, for example, I don't know where everyone's from, um, but you know, usually it's through a telecom partnership. So, if you get a mobile plan, you get 12 months free of Deezer, let's say, um, or Spotify, or whatever the um, you know music streaming uh, you know platform is in that region. Um, so then, the platform is then spending all their money to retain you um, at month 10, 11, and 12 in hopes of keeping you. Also, um, everyone is looking at their own way of optimizing content creation. Some platforms are investing um, in their own artists, right? So hoping that, and then, you know, they'll hope that they'll become big and then there'll be royalties later on when they're very famous. You know, hopefully they found, you know, the next Jay-Z or Beyonce. Um, some are taking a completely different approach. They're just eliminating the artist completely, um, generating AI created music. Um, so based on the platform, they're, they're approaching um, uh, this, these shared problems in sometimes the same way, um, and sometimes in different ways. Uh, but ultimately, you just want to get more subscribers. So their main goal is to convert as many free users into subscribers as humanly possible. And this is kind of where we come in. So when you have a lot of growth capital, a lot of competition, the same problems, and the same playbook, we're coming at them and say, have you ever thought about value distribution as a competitive advantage? And in everything we do, I'm obviously giving, you know, the music streaming example right now, but in every vertical we go in with a, um, you know, blockchain organization, um, whether that be insurance or mobility or, you know, you name it, we're always talking to people um, that have a present day paradigm and we're coming at them with a future way of doing things that they should act upon today. This will always be the case. And we're on good authority. Um, we were pretty good at, um, and this is where the storytelling bit comes in, because um, we found a lot of the blockchain uh, companies were, were talking in one language to everyone within an organization, when ultimately different people within organizations have different remits and contribute to the buying decision in different ways. Um, but one thing that's become clear is that, you know, you have 100 companies around the world and ultimately about five to 10 really truly get it to the point where they want to activate because they see the potential for long-term engagement. Um, and new forms of revenue, but also from a brand standpoint. So Facebook example usually works well. Um, you know, so obviously, you know, with data sharing and monetization, you would think that the economic aspect is primary, but there's also what it means in terms of creating a new ethical framework with your users that is appealing to a lot of platforms, particularly in Europe. Um, so you know, the Facebook example gives it uh, works been working with streamers specifically in like the music streaming space but like if anyone you know we, we do this in like different verticals uh, but for for you know streamer we thought music streaming would be a pretty ideal uh, way to do it based on some you know market norms that are going on there and you know we've learned a lot along the way in terms of how um, enterprise kind of like uh, perceives value um, 
and then been quite surprised that a lot of the platforms that are most interested are more interested, not from a commercial standpoint, but from an ethical standpoint, um, in terms of alignment with their values and how that can be translated into marketing talking points and things like that. Absolutely. Um, and I think that's a very interesting perspective that we don't often get to see, or at least, I mean, I'm a researcher. I don't have to do with a lot of the business side of, of things, but I think yeah. it's very interesting to see how you can approach this uh, and how you can make it seem valuable to those you're trying to reach as well. well the, I, I, yeah. I mean, I, from my experience in the different verticals we've operated in, it's been, you know, maybe it's just how we do it, but like, I think it's been pretty clear that we are pretty good at getting value across. Um, I think that's because we invest a lot in the, the storytelling side of it. So we don't say the same thing to anybody and whoever's willing to listen jumps in. You know, we say something very intentional to a specific type of person that owns a specific part of the decision making or budget process uh, that speaks to their remit. Um, so we would talk to the chief technical officer different than we had the head of growth. We would speak to a friend looking to introduce us versus maybe someone we loosely know inside that wants to introduce us internally. And what I found was that no matter what, you, you need some form of urgency. Uh, without urgency, they're a fan, but not enough to write a check for it. And in the music streaming uh, case, our primary form of urgency is GDPR Article 20, and essentially copycat legislation that deals with uh, portability. Um, this is our, you know, we're really hanging on tight to, to Article 20 and the threat that portability has on these platforms and specifically how they all monetize. Um, because essentially they can invest a lot of money in you and then you, legally speaking, would be able to take that data. And this is what I was explaining at the end of the call. Uh, take all that data uh, that they invested so much in you. So let's say on Spotify, they've invested $70 in you over two years. You would then be able to go to Deezer, say, hey, here you go, Deezer. Create a unique profile for me with my music taste. Or what's more powerful, and um, we have the, the technical means to do it, the legal means to do it, but we don't have the user experience means to do it just yet. We could all unionize. So maybe 70 of us, not a big deal. But imagine if 100,000 people got off Spotify and started to you form a union and sell their data as a group, as a collective, that would be powerful. And that's what we're seeing as the future. And this is what we're saying this legislation threatens them with, uh, which is why they should create more sustainable uh, business models uh, today to basically still be around in the future. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, as per these data unions, I, I think I'm not alone here when I say for me too, that is something that is still a bit futuristic and a bit hard to imagine how that will look in practice. Uh, will that be in the form of a, a browser plugin where I can click, I want to share this, 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 and that? Malena touched on it a little bit, but I'm still yeah. not entirely sure how that will look in practice in the future. Yeah, so its form takes on, it can take on different forms. So Marlene was probably talking about an app called Swash, uh, which was developed on, part, on top of the streamer network. So that is a, a browser plugin. Uh, that deals with data across, like, you, it, you know, she probably did a demo, but, you know, very granular across maybe certain um, parts of the internet. It could be Amazon, could be your search, could be Facebook, could be Twitter. Um, and then there would be potentially buyers for that data. And then you monetize an incrementally increase in value as part of a web browser plugin. What we deal with my team specifically at Instigation Protocol, could be found there's two types of people in this world. There's type of people that want to build a product that has different values than the platform we use today, just no users yet, but hopefully those values and attract users, a migration of, and then new users um, to their platform built on decentralized technology and so forth, right? Our team goes into the belly of the beast, goes into a platform, right, and saying, hey, value distribution could be a really cool thing for you. So we're gonna help you change your business model, not overnight, not everywhere, we're just taking a splice of it. So to answer your question, in a music streaming context at least, that could be um, not even with everybody, but a specific cohort of users within the app. So you'd be on your Spotify, maybe it's not you, maybe they're looking for um, people under the age of 25, uh, specifically in France, right? That could be it. Um, and only those people would have a new feature on their app um, where they're either, either making money, so there's an internal wallet, um, or it's just subsidizing their subscription costs versus actually giving them the money, right? Um, so what we're looking to do is find the lowest friction, lowest, lightest integration humanly possible, 
um, to essentially prove out that distributing the value actually creates new value for you. That could be through a new app, that could be through a plugin, that could be, but what we're doing is finding uh, light features that, because ultimately all roads lead to the technical team. And the last thing they want to hear is something that disrupts the roadmap that they thought they agreed upon in January, right? Mm -hmm. So we're, we're trying not to threaten that, but at the same time, a, B test something in a particular part of the ecosystem and then expand it from there. Very interesting. Very interesting. Um, is there anybody else in the room who would like to ask a question while we're here? Uh, you can raise your hand. You can ask it in the discord chat. Cyprian, please. Yeah. Hey, um, so I'm super, super interested in by what you're doing with the data union, uh, because, uh, I'm currently building, a a platform for movies, for streaming movies with friends. Uh, it's basically like the Twitch of movies. Nice. Um, and we basically want to decentralize everything. Uh, so the system is built on crypto economic uh, uh, system modeling, where the idea is really to uh, share and allocate the maximum of uh, value created by the system to the maximum number of people, depending on the engagement and involvement of, um, of each users. Because uh, you can, within the platform, you can actually uh, uh, create an, an, an event where you will watch people watch movie with your, with your friends or with your followers. And you can also create pages, which are basically a created list of movies to watch. And depending on if people attend to an event or they click on the links that you push on your, put on your pages, then uh, people uh, will attend that and you will get a share, like a cut from the transaction that is made afterwards. Um, and so we are truly designing the whole uh, data uh, pipeline. Uh, so data pods, uh, like we had in an earlier uh, talk. And yeah. um, for the moment, we are building it like a regular company. But the idea really is, is to uh, switch that to uh, a, a more kind of decentralized vision where every user is uh, the owner of its own data. Um, so yeah, this is where we are right now. And I don't know like how you guys work. Are you planning to be like kind of a marketplace for that at some point? So, so a data union essentially is a combination of a marketplace, um, a network and a, the Ethereum blockchain, right? So they, they, you know, if you want to use the marketplace, they build great. It can be customized at a development cost. So their goal is to just have people, um, build on the network utilize a marketplace and then leverage that marketplace in a, in a way that makes sense for whatever the platform is. So in a streaming music streaming context, it's a listener, right. Um, and the streaming platform in the middle and an advertiser, right. Or a, a data vendor in different industries, the marketplace looks a bit different. So the, the streamer doesn't actually get involved, um, in what sides of the marketplace you're trying to be. They just want to give you the marketplace to find, to create a pathway for a person that produces data to then monetize on it with who already, already buys the data, but then have that bypass the platform and through a smart contract, split the money accordingly, right? So in your case, uh, if you're focused on um, more on the video streaming side, there are actors in this world that are, don't, no one actually likes the streaming companies, video or music besides the streaming companies themselves. The person, the people that hate the, the streaming, uh, platforms the most are the studios because the studios actually don't and the, the labels in the music context. So I'll just stick with music for a second, but so labels hate streaming or, uh, platforms. Um, they don't make really any money off of them. And they also, um, the only way they make money is through actual live events. Um, so this is why you see a lot of, um, labels that are actually already working with a lot of blockchain companies, um, and investing in them, uh, as well. Uh, to overtake the Spotify of the world because the platforms actually don't help the artist or help, don't help the label. The same with the studios in a movie, um, in a film context, right? So, and there's different kind of organizations that are solving different problems. So in your case, it seems like you're um, really user focused where I think that there is maybe something to be said around engaging other stakeholders in the supply chain of video streaming that have incentive interest to eliminate the current ones that we use, whether it be Netflix, Hulu, and you know, the millions, Disney plus and the millions of others. So, um, and then 
essentially also collaborate with others solving different parts of the puzzle. So for example, there's a lot of people building decentralized solutions um, specifically for uh, royalty disbursement. It's a huge, huge problem. Um, you know, all the people that actually go into making a film or a piece of music, it's, 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 it's insane. Um, and it's very archaic. So what I would just do there is just, um, you know, as opposed to just focusing just on the user, start to find collaborations on the content side as well. Um, cause you both are basically yeah, we, trying to, to eliminate, you know, the same people. That's basically working directly with the studio. Uh, we are already doing that like Warner nice. and Disney and like, uh, yeah, a bunch of them. Paramount. Yeah. yeah. Funny. Super cool. Right. Yeah. So that's yeah, the idea. Time. They still don't know that it's going to be tokens, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They, they're, I, I would say that the, um, you know, I think you know, moving forward, because there's already like platforms that already use tokens. Um, they're just not, they're, generally speaking, there's not, they're not like cryptographic tokens by any means, but the incentive models they already have, right? So I don't think it's a, it's a huge stretch. Um, and particularly as you see more services that are trying to, um, platforms that are trying to create service models, right? So for example, like Amazon coming out with credit cards and Apple coming out with credit cards. So I think you'll see a consolidation as these bigger players try to consolidate uh, more users and create their own ecosystems, financial ecosystems within uh, their brand, right? Um, and I think that um, it may be hard to get a large company to do tokens, but I think some of the B-listers and smaller companies are more incentivized to use tokens, may already be doing so, um, but just not cryptographically, right? So the pitch there may be from a security aspect, it could be from a micro payment aspect, but I don't think there's overly too much resistance to it, generally speaking, at least in my experience thus far. Excellent. Yeah, totally, totally on the same track. <laughs> cool, cool. Anybody else in the room who wants to raise his hand? I followed the Discord chat, but so far I have not seen anything. Um, <clears throat> are there any other tips that, since I think you have a very unique perspective on that, that you would give to people who are not used to how would, how would I express that how, to portray the value in different kind of uh, perspectives and different kind of viewpoints um, kind of general guidelines or tips yeah I mean I would just like kind of I now look in your virtual rooms but look in your look at your team and if you find that you have an overly technical team um, that's not necessarily bad but I would look at who you think your potential audience is. So a big problem that I've run into with a lot of the, the blockchain organizations that I've encountered is that they generally have this motto, they're going to build something and people will eventually use it versus I'm going to build something that I think has applicability to a specific audience. Um, and you need, you need to kind of, at least at the very least, talk with someone that has more, that focuses on the business side of things to at least try to find the right questions to ask to see if you're on the right path. Cause I find that there's a heavy, heavy amount of investment that goes into technical development, like mainnet 2.0, mainnet 3.0, mainnet, like probably the time we're done with this call, there'll be a 4.0 somewhere, but they haven't yet had meaningful conversations with enough diverse set of uh, potential customers to identify if they even 1.0 is good enough or 4.0 is irrelevant. So I think you just need balance from a skill set on your team or at the very least, least um, some initial input from these type of people um, to test out your audience, um, find the marketability of it, and then see if your your value proposition works. And if it maybe does work, but using the wrong language, what exactly that means. So I've been on calls where things from like microplaza plasma to like sharding to like Byzantine consensus, and I'm looking at the other people on in the rooms, and I'm like, I'm puzzled. So they're definitely puzzled. So if I would just kind of basically act like you're talking to a first grader. Don't overly use technical jargon. Talk about it if you're talking about a centralized solution and then have them ask more specific questions. And then your goal should be to get to the technical person within their team. Um, and then you can just use your, what you, whatever you like to say, but don't, you know, put it all on, you know, the business oriented people, the growth people, the product people all at once. Then they'll just get you know disincentivized from actually you know taking you further into the organization to materialize a relationship. 